which brings <laughs> us to the end of this live demonstration. So this is where you guys can uh, give us questions and we try to answer them as best as we can. Yeah, so now we're in the Q&A session and if you have any questions, just post them to us and we'll see what we can do. Um, in the meantime, um, I'm trying to increase that window a little bit here. <laughs> See more of us of the game. Yeah, so we have uh, how many missions have Crisis 2 in single player? Um, the number of missions we won't go into, but the gameplay time is over 10 hours, um, which is quite long for a single player campaign. Someone else would like to know how long did the development take of Crisis 2? Uh, Dennis? Um, well, it's, it's always, always a, tra a, tra a transition thing because like people come and leave, etc. Like, the project becomes more important, but I think it was like way over like, around two years or so, a de few development time um, with downtime, etc. Frequent interface, and uh, just arriving at the station when the game is ready to ship. Okay, we're having some more technical issues again, uh, so we're just going to take the stream down for a second, uh, resolve those, and we'll be right back up. So, don't go away. Right, seems we're back. Yep. So, should we pick up with that question again, on how long did the development take for Crisis 2? So yeah, the development of Crisis 2, um, I think it was about right, two years, including the, the pre-production, maybe a little bit longer, um, arriving at this day, basically, where the game is almost hitting the shelves. <laughs> so there's a question about the PC specs. So um, the min specs is like a Core 2 Duo, like 2 gigs of RAM, um, and an 8800 GT. So, yeah, that's our minimum specification yeah. uh, to run the game. Uh, screen resolution, what screen resolution are we running? I think the game right now is running at 1650... Thousand, well, 1680, 1050 or something like that. I think that's what this like, screen can basically deliver. What game element did we work on the most? I guess that would be the nano suit. Clearly, the nano suit. I mean, it's, it's really like a world changer. Like, there's so many things you can do with it, so that had to be rock solid. And um, also, like, we had a nano suit in Crisis One, but obviously, like, transitioning over to the consoles, like, there were different challenges. What we want to do, we want to improve on it. Like, there were things which we were not really happy about the current the, the nano suit in, in Crisis One in terms of how the modes were laid out and. In general, like, we want to make the suit much more usable without compromising on the options it gives you. So a lot of research time went into that to make sure that we have a good nano suit, which really enhances the gameplay and it's really like a game changer. So did the coupling of both speed and strength as one suit mode was decided because it made more sense? Yes, clearly. Um, so especially, uh, well, was basically meaning in, in the previous question, like. The combination of, or the, in Crisis 1, the separation of speed and strength. So each was a dedicated mode, and you needed to switch the suit modes in order to get any like combination effects. Like sprinting fast, you would need to be in speed mode. And if you also wanted to jump really high and far at the end of the sprint, you would need to, during the sprint, switch the mode. And that turned out to be really hardcore. I mean, if once you mastered it, it was kind of cool, but it was not very accessible. So um, by, by kind of taking that, in a different approach with Crisis 2, by putting the strength, like the, the power jumping, for example, in more individual actions while focusing on the armor and the cloak as dedicated modes, we, we really hopefully improved that quite a lot. So, so far, like the feedback we got is really, really positive. Uh, so we've been asked now, is Crisis 2 now a tactical shooter? Um, I guess this is in contrast to Crisis 1. Um, we'd like to think that both were tactical shooters. I mean, in Crisis 1, you were also given a lot of options. Um, it was less verticality and a lot more open environment. Um, but in Crisis 2, we've kind of enhanced this a bit more. I mean, you now have this visor, which clearly shows you the different routes you can take, um, the different options open to you, which Crisis 1 didn't. Um, it was really, you know, you had to find them yourself. So, um, yes, it is a tactical shooter. Um, same as Crisis 1 was a tactical shooter, but we're trying to bring 
encourage players to play that way a little bit more. I mean, in the end, it's really up to you as a player. Like, if you want to play Crisis or Crisis Two as a tactical shooter, you can do so. Like, you have all the tools and all everything in place in order to do that and have fun with it. But if you want to go more like action or more really stealth, it's up to you. It's really that, that's that's the, that's the beauty of the, having the nano suit of as, as such a game changing element because you as a player, you're really in control how you want to play it. <laughs> Where can you buy the posters? <laughs> um, that's a good question. Uh, they're not actually for sale, as far as we're aware. Uh, perhaps if you have a sneaky visit to the Frankfurt office and no one catches you. <laughs> We'll have to see, but we would like not to encourage that. How many people worked on Crisis 2? I don't really have a full number. I think, like, in game designers, we were like a group of a design team. I think it was like around 10 people in general. So it's like, love design, game design, story. I mean, what you have to understand is it's not about what a single person does, it's the group effort. So in your team, there's like game design or you know, game development is such a, such a cooperative group effort in order to do it because you need all these specialists for specific areas so um, I mean these the teams who work on specific parts of the game they change depending on, on complexity so we, we are very agile in the way we kind of compose our teams. I think you also we should mention that um, with Crisis 2 we also have Crytek UK working on the game it was not just Crytek Frankfurt, Frankfurt um, and they worked exclusively on the multiplayer part of the game so that was a team of 80, 90 people um, working exclusively on making Crisis 2 a great multiplayer. And I mean, these guys have a lot of experience in multiplayer. They've yeah. made the Time Splitters franchise, um, and they've really done a great job with all of that. So, how did we design the suit to be invisible to the NPC and not finding us? So, um, basically, since we have like a proper AI, so they base their decision making process on what's going on around them. Um, one of the core things we need to be, what we, what we need to teach them was understand what the player is doing. And since, since with an nano suit, yeah, you can basically in the middle of combat, you're going to say, oh, I want to cloak now. Um, you, need, you need meaningful ways of the AI to react to this, but also you don't want to make it overpowered. So there needs to be a challenge, there needs to be a game in there. Like if, you, if you just give the player all superpowers for free, then there isn't really so much of fun in there, I guess for some people at least. So um, it was important for us to make sure that the AI can be tricked by using the suit in a, in a, in a meaningful way, like cloaking, etc. But like if you're, if you're, for example, cloaked and you get really, really close to an AI from the front, like he might still notice you. Like you might see like shimmering effects right in front of him. So um, it might give you like a, a second to react, take him out quickly. But if you get really, really close, he will find you. He will see you. So if you come up from behind naturally, like it's even better because they don't have. Like eyes in the back of their head. So, how many hours of modeling did you put in, and what modeling software was used? Uh, that's a difficult question. We, we, we have no artists here. So, what, what we did basically is so we had a number of tools we used. Uh, like our artists are like really proficient in, in most of the tools which are being used in the market out there. So, depending on what what's needed, like some tools work better, some work, work better for other situations. So. Our artists are very flexible in that regard, so we use the best possible tool for the best possible uh, usage, of course. Uh, can I work for Crytek? <laughs> well, that would depend on <laughs> where you want to work, really. Um, one of the great things that we can encourage you to do is if you're interested in games design specifically, or uh, level design, or modeling, or anything like this, um, we have our own modding portal, which is crymod.com. Um, and you can use our Sandbox 2 editor, which comes with Crisis, Crisis Warhead, um, and that's a really, really great place to get started. Um, it's our official modding community, so we keep a very close eye on it, um, and we have we have hired a number of people through yeah. Crymod just by recognizing the great work that they're posting there. Um, yeah. So I'd recommend starting there. Yeah, there's, there's already like, so much talent in the community, so it's always a pleasure just seeing what they've come up with next. Like, it's, it's really, really awesome. Yeah. So we're always looking forward to new stuff for the community. Uh, did we spend more time on single player or multiplayer? Well, it depends. I mean, um, the way we have organized this development, like we had a de dedicated team for the multiplayer part and a dedicated team for the single player part. And of course, these teams were in daily contact, synchronizing, making sure the game develops so that both parts get the maximum out of it in the end. But both were developed at the same time, just with a different focus, of course. Uh, 
Uh, are there any vehicles like VTOLs and helicopters in multiplayer, like in Crisis 1 and Crisis Wars? Um, so in multiplayer, we are not using vehicles in Crisis 2, um, not at this point. The reason behind this is that the gameplay is a lot faster now. Um, in Crisis 1, it was a lot more open, and again, as we've mentioned, in Crisis 2, we're going a lot more vertical. Um, it's smaller, the teams are smaller, um, but it's a lot faster, so you're uh, encountering people a lot more instead of just wandering around in a map and uh, not finding anything. Um, and we do like to encourage players as well to kind of get stuck in and, and work as a team. Um, I mean, before there were a few occasions in Crisis where we felt like players were just rushing for the VTOL and whoever got there first was kind of winning the game. Um, and we want to make it a lot more balanced this time around. There's a like, uh, question about Stay With 3D. So um, the game comes with uh, Stay With 3D on all three platforms. So we have it running for Xbox, P3, and the PC, just right out of the box. You don't need the hardware at home. So we're waiting for more questions. <laughs> Okay, so a lot of people are talking about the modding um, in Crisis. Um, it's worth noting that we really value our modding community um, and we will continue that in the future. Um, you'll need to stay tuned for any announcements for anything that we've got coming up, but um, in addition to being a really important part for us, not only recruiting, we also like to um, encourage people to show off their creativity and do as much as they can with CryEngine. Um, and this is something that we're gonna continue to support for a long time to come. Uh, so, Dennis, what is your favorite weapon? My favorite weapon? Oh, that's a hard one. I mean, with the customization, you can basically make every weapon your favorite weapon. Um, what I really like is um, the sniper rifle with a silencer. I think that's really, really badass. Using that from a distance and then cloaking again, moving around, being a shadow. And it's a personal thing. Like Some people really like the, the shotgun in our games, just like cloaking, getting up close, and then really hammering away. Other people are like the pistols. I mean, also like the pistols in this game are really, really cool for stealth gameplay. They allow you to move faster while using the sides, for example. Uh, and when you have a silencer on a weapon, for example, you can sometimes fire a couple of shots while cloaked without uncloaking. And the pistols allow for more shots, so that's really where their purpose is, besides being a good backup weapon you can quickly switch to. So it really depends on the people. My person is a sniper rifle. I'd say my personal favorite is the stealth kill out of everything. I think <laughs> if, if I could go through the whole game, I'd try and just stealth kill everything. Um, might be difficult with a pinger, but, um, and especially in multiplayer. Uh, of course, the, the stealth kills, which you will have just seen, where you can sneak up behind people and just one-shot kill them with a knife, or um, you can do that in multiplayer as well, which is uh, quite, quite satisfying and gives you some bragging rights. Um, so are all the weapons in single player available in multiplayer? Yes. Clearly, yes. <laughs> um, do the enemy have nano suits? That's something we don't give away. <laughs> Sorry. Um, are you happy with the final product of the game? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's it's been it's been an awesome ride, and like seeing it increase and improve uh, during the development and, and everything coming together. I mean, we have such a diversity in the game. There's so many, so many small features. Many of you guys, when you, when you get hands on, will like explore over the first couple of days, weeks, and come back to it. There's, there's so much variety in there, and just seeing the, all of that come together and actually seeing the game in the game, it's, it's been awesome. Like we are, we are very, very happy with what we see. Like. And it's really exciting as well to see. Um just kind of what you guys think of the single player as well, because since we haven't shown off too much of that, at least it hasn't been playable too much, so um, we're really excited to see what people think and what we've done with the game. <laughs> 